Hey guys, today we're going to try making churros in a waffle iron. Hey everyone, I am so excited about today's kitchen experiment. Today, we are going to try to make churros in a waffle iron. I saw this recipe float by on social media, I don't know, months and months ago, and I just haven't been able to get it out of my head. I always want a churro, and I rarely want to fry anything. So I thought that maybe this waffle iron hack could help me have churros when I want them. This is a recipe I saw through the Serious Eats social media feed. It showed up probably in my Facebook feed, and it's actually a kind of old recipe. It was looks like it was published in 2014. And the contributor has a book called Will It Waffle and a blog of the same name. So I will link to that original recipe down below so you can check it out. I have my Belgian waffle maker heating up and it is at its highest setting to get started. Churros are made from patachudo, which I have here. I made this earlier and I looked it up and you can make patachudo ahead of time and put it in the fridge and use it when you want to. So that's a good tip here. Patachudo dough is the pastry dough that you make eclairs and cream puffs out of and churros. So I made this earlier and I filmed it. So here it is. Despite its fancy sounding name, patachu is pretty simple to make. In a medium pot over medium high heat, add one half cup of water, four tablespoons of butter, one quarter teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, and one quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Let this mixture come to a simmer. We're looking for the butter to melt and the salt and sugar to totally dissolve. Then we're going to add one half cup of all-purpose flour and we're going to stir that in until it becomes a smooth paste. It's going to look a little bit like wallpaper paste. It's going to be a very gluey looking dough ball. We're going to let this cook for a minute, minute and a half and once that's done we will take it off the heat. Set this aside to cool for about five minutes. We want this mixture to be cool because we're going to add eggs and we don't want them to cook. Speaking of eggs, it's been five minutes, so we're going to add eggs one at a time, stirring until they're totally absorbed each time. This is gonna take a little bit of elbow grease and it looks like you won't get too far for a while, but it will come together and become very smooth. It's time for the second egg and a lot more stirring. Once this is completely stirred in and totally absorbed, you'll end up with a pretty stiff dough. This dough looked stiffer than other patachudos that I've had before, but the recipe did say that it should be stiff dough. That looked a little bit like buttercream and I think we are so let's get to waffling. My waffle iron is heated up, steamy, and we're just gonna spray it with some non-stick spray just to make sure that this does not stick. And we have our patachudo. Now, the original recipe that's on Serious Eats basically tells you to make like one waffle, but the reviews basically said that that really doesn't make very many waffles. So I thought that what we would do is make four mini waffles in each of the quadrants of my waffle maker using my handy dandy little scooper. So this is my like medium sized scooper. So we're gonna try that. So we hopefully get like more servings from this. All 
right. Let's close it up. And the recipe says that this should take about five to 10 minutes until the waffles are golden brown. While that's going, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the dipping sauce that I made. I put a poll on Instagram to know if people would like to dip their churros in chocolate or caramel. And chocolate won by a good amount. I'm actually team caramel, but I figured I'd give the people what they want. And I made this chocolate sauce that was also in the Serious Eats recipe, but I messed it up and made something that I actually think is really good. So I'm gonna show you how I made that sauce now. You will find out why I'm calling this crunchy Mexican chocolate sauce. In a small microwave proof bowl, put two ounces of dark chocolate. 60 to 70% chocolate will do. Then add one half cup of sugar, which was my mistake and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Then add a teaspoon of cinnamon and about an eighth a teaspoon of ancho chili powder, which is a smoky, slightly spicy chili powder that I love. And then a quarter cup of heavy whipping cream. Finally, we're going to add a teaspoon of corn syrup. Now we're gonna melt this in the microwave. We're going to put it in the microwave for 30 seconds at a time, stirring after each time in the microwave until this mixture is nice and smooth. And it will never get smooth because of that sugar. I gave this a taste and decided it needed a little bit more spice. So I added another eighth of a teaspoon for a total of one fourth of a teaspoon of chili powder. So how did I mess up this chocolate sauce? Wow. What happened was the recipe on Serious Eats had the ingredients for the cinnamon sugar that we're gonna end up sprinkling on our waffles in the same area as the chocolate sauce. And I did not read very carefully. And I made my chocolate sauce with a bunch of extra sugar in it. And I was making it and stirring it and then I tasted it and I did not understand why the sugar was not dissolved. Um, but that's because the sugar shouldn't have been in there. However, I love how it came out. The sugar adds a little like crunchy bits to the chocolate sauce. And it kind of reminds me of, we have a chocolatier near here called Taza Chocolate. And I think they're pretty national. You can find that chocolate anywhere. And they make a Mexican style chocolate that's got a little bit of texture inside. And that's because of the way that they process the cocoa when they're making the chocolate. This has a similar texture just from the sugar. And you know, we're kind of making a Mexican inspired um, dessert here, or breakfast, I guess maybe this could be. Um, so I feel like my crunchy chocolate sauce will actually work really well. I, I actually love it and I couldn't stop eating it. So there you go. Sometimes mistakes in the kitchen lead to awesome new discoveries. So we're just waiting for this waffle to go. And there is quite a bit of steam coming off of the waffle. So while it's been going for a few minutes, I think there's probably a little bit more time. And I think I'm going to take a look at this once there's not so much steam coming up, because that to me says that most of the sort of water's been cooked off and we should have a nice crispy pastry inside. Okay, I'm only seeing a few little wisps of steam coming up. So I'm going to take a look at this. Ooh, these look nice and golden brown. So I think I'm going to take them out. Now the recipe didn't say to do this, but my instincts say that what I want to do is put a little bit of a puncture in each of these waffles on the side here. Now, when you're making cream puffs, you do this so that the steam has a place to escape and so you don't end up with a soggy pastry. I don't want a soggy churro waffle, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right. Now, the next step to these churro waffles 
is to brush them. I have this silicone brush that I love. Brush them with butter and then dip them in cinnamon sugar like you would have on a churro. Now I already can tell that these aren't as crispy as what you would get the pastry of a churro and you know you're just never going to get that without really truly frying it and I think probably most of that crispiness will come from the cinnamon sugar. All right and the other thing I'm noticing here is that because there's the sort of ridges in the waffle the cinnamon sugar isn't getting into those little holes so I'm just going to sprinkle it over to make sure we get really good coverage of that cinnamon sugar because churro is a lot about that cinnamon and sugar. All right, so we have two of them done and honestly, I just can't wait any longer to try this out. So I have my crunchy mistake dipping chocolate. I'm just gonna do a little drizzle of that on here. That bite was very chocolatey. So let me take a bite without the chocolate just to get more of, I feel like I just have chocolate all over my face now more of the taste without the chocolate. So this really isn't a churro, um, obviously. Um, it's not fried and that's really what's going to give it that super ultra crispy pastry that you look for in a churro. That said, this is absolutely delicious. Um, the cinnamon sugar really does add a lot of that flavor from the churro. So you do get this churro-esque um, flavor and experience, even though, you know, you're not getting exactly what you're looking for in a churro. I love that I now know that I can use my waffle iron for patachudo because patachu is actually super easy to make. Now I know that you can make it ahead of time and put it in the refrigerator so you can make it ahead of say a party. I think something like this would be really great for Christmas breakfast and you could make that dough super fast the night before Christmas and in the morning just pull out your waffle iron and have a really tasty, sweet, indulgent breakfast. Um, so I would say not a churro substitute, super tasty and delicious. I will absolutely make these again. I think that also that these might be good split in half and filled with some pastry cream and some whipped cream and kind of have this sort of churro waffle cream puff situation going on. That sounds so delicious. And I just thought these would make an amazing base for an ice cream sandwich. So there you have it. Is a churro waffle close to a churro? Not super close, but still pretty delicious. Let me know if you have any other hacky recipes you've seen out there that you would like to give me a try because it is fun to run experiments like this in the kitchen. And let me know if you like this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe and bell button to be alerted when I launch a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Now go have some fun in the kitchen.